Hey, welcome back from the long weekend. Well, it was long. We got an extra hour, didn't we? <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday, November 7th. Now, what we do on this show, each show, is talk about penny stocks wherever they may be. We look at penny stocks on the OTC market, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, wherever they may be, we're going to follow them. Because a penny stock is any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's on. Now, we do look at a lot of stocks on the OTC markets, but I've got nothing against those major exchange penny stocks whatsoever. Now, recently, I've got a list that a lot of us have, DBGI, TXTM, PLPL, uh, LATMA, which is now L-T-M-A-Y. They just changed their ticker today. These are hot companies we've been watching. Lots of people have got their eyes on them. Didn't do a whole lot today, so we're not going to talk about them today, but they still belong on your watch list for those kernels that could pop at any second. Now, as I said, most of the stocks we do look at are OTC stocks. I do a lot of research on them. All of that comes from my research. That's news I've looked at over the last week. You got your oldest news up at the top and your newest news is down there at the bottom. And this is all eventful news. These are your mergers, your acquisitions, things like that. Really good pieces of news in there. And some things are running on that news and some are probably going to run. They're just lingering catalysts. Now, all of the due diligence I do on OTC stocks is done on this site. At least this is where I start 100% of the time, and I advise you to do it too because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That's going to save you a ton of work, folks. That is the information you're looking around for. Well, quit all that looking around and start your research here at the OTCMarkets.com website. It's free, you don't have to sign in, and it's updated every day. What more could you ask? Maybe a different color. Yeah, okay. Gray isn't the best, but the information is hot. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Doesn't look like it finished anything better than it normally does. Uh, we're at $1.6 billion volume, 5.5 share volume in trades, just near 250. That's our average, our low average. So it's really nothing to spend a whole lot of time talking about. And I don't see anything changing right now, folks. Now, as I said, we're not going to be looking at the hot stocks everybody's talking about, but there's always new kernels being thrown into the pot that could pop faster than the ones we're watching. And I've got some of those right now. They are very interesting stocks that are popping, and I think I've got more pop to come. First stock we're taking a look at is ticker CNNA, Can American Corps. Now, I got nothing new to report about this company except there was a lot of excitement around it today. There was no new news, no fresh filings, nothing like that. But there has been a lot of changes with this company over the last few weeks, which is culminating right now to what I believe to be excitement and speculation for this company. And I think it's proof in the pudding when I say they hit a new one-year high today. She finished today just over a penny at 0 .0116 and just under 50% gains. She's on the pink tier in current and has both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. These are important if you're in the stock for a long period of time, a long swing, a long hold. But if you're just in a short swing or a day trade, you don't have to worry too much about these. Otherwise, they are important. Don't think they're not. So what does CNN need do? Well, they tell us down here that they're in legal cannabis and hemp industries. Maybe they still are. There was a news press that came out on November 2nd. Sounds like there's a change of operations, definitely a change of control. and We're going to get to that. So I'm not quite sure if they're still doing hemp or not. So what was the relative volume around the company's no catalyst today? <laughs> not too bad. 6.7 million, jumping to 31, almost 32 million today. Nice jump and bump without any catalyst. Share structure. All right, we've got three different numbers here. I normally go to the unrestricted. I just figure any share that's on the open market is part of the float. Unrestricted shares are ones that go on the market. That's my logic. That number is just about a quarter billion. Then you got held at the DTC. This is where the uh, shares move back and forth when we're buying them and selling them. That's not a number I really trust that often because it's a transitorial number. And then you've got the float, which in most cases is outdated. So what I do now is if it's a pink, you can normally find these in the disclosures. So I just go to the most recent disclosure and I look up float 
and they'll tell me here now you can't get these with the 10 K's and the 10 Q's I don't know why they don't want to tell us what the float is but you can normally find them in the disclosures and they tell us they have 167 million shares in the float so we don't have a high float we don't have a low float she's just a good old average float financials we got nothing coming in for the last four years and looking at the quarterly we still have nothing coming in and it doesn't say shell risk which means you're in business but you're not making money now maybe they're not in business in that case they'd be a shell company but i guess they had a business and they just aren't doing it <laughs> Whatever the case is, they're not making any money right now. So this change of control, change of operations, change of business is going to be welcomed. Disclosures. Well, this is where some of the changes start to come into the picture. We've got some 8Ks here that came out in the last two weeks. I just want you to take a quick look at this. They're turning over the people that are in the management of the company. Uh, the company on October 21st dismissed Michael Gillespie and Associates, the company's auditor. Also on the 21st, the company accepted the resignation of Bradley Hanger as director of the company. The next 8K tells us on October 31st, Jason Black resigned as director and officer of the company. Also on that day, Alexander Woods Leo was appointed as director, president, CEO, and secretary of the company. Now this comes with a change of control, right? This was all happening. So this both of these came out on the 24th and the 2nd and the news we're going to take a look at came out on the 2nd as well now do they have any other news that we could consider before we jump into it um yeah they had one just a couple weeks ago can american Corps announces binding letter of intent and i'm sure that has to do with the change of control so let's jump into that right now so this came out on the 2nd, and they tell us that on October 31st, 2022, the company completed the asset purchase of Mark II Media Group as a majority-owned subsidiary of Can America Group. Mark II Media Group is a technology company with a vision to develop and distribute applications globally under a unique business model that eliminates heavy end-user costs. Mark II is registered with Google Play, Apple Store, Stream, and Oculus. As a condition of the asset purchase, Mark II's media CEO, Alexander Woods Leo, was appointed as director and CEO of Can America, which we just read in the 8K. New management intends to rapidly expand Can American into a diversified holdings company. In addition to Mark's II acquisition, the company is currently negotiating additional acquisitions and preparing for an additional board appointments, while immediately beginning the audit process for the sake of uplisting to the QB. So you have a new man at the wheel who likes to distribute applications globally through everybody, Google Play, Apple Store, Stream, and the new Oculus, right? So they're in the metaverse. And I'm not exactly sure what they're all about. Haven't done a lot of deep dive into this new company, Mark II Media Group, but the man is excited. He's now got his own boat. It's like buying a, you know, a new toy. It's now his, he's in charge. He's got ideas, he's got plans, and he's got acquisitions, more acquisitions with an S, which is always good to hear. And they're planning to uplist. Now, everybody says that, so I take that with a grain of salt. But the stock was running today, and there is no new news. You have this on the second and those two filings. That's it. With a lot of unanswered questions. This is what I mean when I say speculation. Give the investor room to imagine the best, and he will. And he'll push the price further than it probably has a right to go. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how high she got today before she started to pull back. And has she got anything left to give? She did hit a new year high today. Ah, uh, you probably knew we were going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim, right? This is that free trading platform you get with TD Ameritrade. When you sign up, they just give it to you absolutely free. And all you got to do is keep your account open to use it. What a deal. 
Now we are going to take a look at ticker CNNA, but first I want to give a shout out to ticker MOHOY. This was running today and I was chasing its tail trying to find some information for why, but I found no textual information. What I found was technical information. When I came over to the charts, it just kind of became apparent that every time the price gets near the 200, it likes to jump. You can see some massive jumps when she's broken the 200. Now we are on the six month, four hour chart right now and we're a good distance away from that 200-day SMA on the four-hour chart. But this is the last 200-day SMA she has to conquer. When you look at the 20-day one-hour, the 200-day was way far away and she wasn't going to lift her head up to get near it. Now when it got real close, she's jumped and she's jumped really hard. She jumped here from about a penny and a half up to seven and a half cents. So you're looking at almost 400% run. She came all the way down slapped that 50-day SMA and then jumped right back into line, got right back into line as if nothing happened and continued growing. And look at all of our technicals, folks. They are strong on the one hour. Now, if you look at the five-day, five-minute, once she got over the 200 here, she did not want to go back down and she has taken off with that huge run. She has fallen hard, came right down to her 200 and bounced right back up to the 50, getting back in line, continuing her slide uphill. And all of our technicals look like she wants to continue to run. And I have no clue why. She's got lots of volume and it was even increasing at the end of the day. So all I know is that every time she gets near the 200, she likes to take a rip. She is now pulling away from all of the 200s and all the time frames except the four uh, hour time frame. That's the last one she's got to conquer. And when she does, she may rip on that one too. So you may want to keep an eye on this for no other reason. Now let's take a look at the stock we came here for, ticker CNNA. We are on a one day, one year chart because I told you she hit a new one year high today of 0 0.0122. And as you can see this year, nothing has even come close to that. She hit a low bubble here in July of 0015. It's almost a thousand percent up right now. And once she broke the 200 here at the beginning of the month, she has not come back down. She's bounced off of it to actually create this new high. Volume is really strong and the technicals are on fire folks literally every single oscillator is pointing up you can't go wrong if that's the case six month four hour view all right she's broke the 200 a couple times over these last six months and that's not a little bounce there that's an 80 percent bounce that's a 75 percent bounce so she likes to bounce when she gets near the 200 and she took off at the beginning of this month coming down bouncing off of that 20 and just pushing up going parabolic all of our technicals are also going parabolic. They're just all climbing straight up. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. Bounced off that low bubble, got up to a, a higher tier here, landed on the 50 day SMA and has been sitting here for just a little over a week and started climbing yesterday and has been climbing through the day with just a wee bit of pullback. And all the technicals are still on fire. The flames just won't go out. <laughs> they just won't go out. Five day, five minute. So once she got above the 200 a few days ago, she refused to come down. She's bouncing over it, over and over again, like a long jumper, you know, jump, jump, jump. And they do that one big jump. And they got that big long jump yesterday. And today she took off from the bell and she ran all the way up until quarter to one when she hit her high. She fell pretty quick crashing through the 50 day SMA, but has pushed herself right back up and looks like she's gonna be on the 200 day haul here. Volume is strong today and the technicals have not let up. Look folks, we're still in the overbought. Everything is still pointing up. She looks like she wants to run without any new catalyst running on the buildup of spec speculation. New CEO, probably going to bring out new press releases to let us know his plans, bring out press releases about the acquisitions, though we don't have any clue when those are going to happen. And he wants to uplist. And as I said, everybody says that. That's just a good thing to hear. But the company's running right now on all of that, and she shows a lot of momentum in heat, still built up. So there's no reason not to look at CNNA for tomorrow, at least. Past that, Keep up with the news. This guy may have something up his sleeve that's worth more than just a bounce. 
We're now looking at another stock that had a lot of activity today. A lot of attention was being given to this. Not for any new news or any new filings today, but they did have a filing on Friday. But it was a real short filing and it was primarily in response to another filing they had put out not too long ago. And that is why the stock ran today, at least in my opinion. Here's the sticker NICH, Niches Inc. She finished today at 0 0.01073, just a tiny, tiniest bit over a penny. Folks, this is a luscious buy-in price. You're buying at a penny. As soon as it moves to a measly two cents, you've got 100% gains. You've doubled your money. Hit three cents, you've tripled your money. Now, if you had bought it at six cents, you'd have to go to 12 cents and 18 cents to double and triple your money. Doesn't it just sound more tantalizing to buy in at a penny or double zero one and just go to the two and three and make two and 300% gains? Of course it does. They finished today just about 79% gains. They're on the pink tier and current and they've got both those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. So they look good in that regard. Now the company is a shell company. They're not in business. They're not doing anything to make money right now. So they're not reporting any revenues and that's all kosher. They're not in any hot water. We're just waiting for something to change. So what does this company do? They tell us that Niche Zinc is a diversified company that specializes in creating merchandise, manufacturing high-end luxury brands, goods, and collectibles for influencers and celebrities. Niches is focused on sports clothing, athleisure brands, sustainable products, NFTs, and technology. We are also taking tremendous steps to protect niches and our clients' intellectual property by innovating technology to help prevent counterfeiting. They've got these special sew-in tags that you scan with your phone, and I'm not quite sure what they do, but this is how they're stopping counterfeiting. In addition to the merchandise and manufacturing, Niches is partnering with brands that are innovating outside of the box. That's always nice to hear. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Not bad, she jumped from about half a million to five and a half million on a very small filing put out on Friday, in my opinion. Share structure. All right, we got three different numbers here. Unrestricted is 30 million DTC is 30 million and the float is 4 million well because it's a pink they got a disclosure so i just jumped into that and there you go folks the float is 4.7 million so whenever i get a chance to jump into a disclosure to get it i'll just do that makes it simple real small float folks 4.7 million on this stock financials we'll be in a shell company you know we're not going to see anything here but zero so everything is kosher here and disclosures. I've got a couple here I want to share with you. We've got a, a couple here and two of them are primary. The first one I want to show you uh, came out about five or six days ago. They were going to do a public offering. They're going to sell more shares to the public, which is going to increase the flow. It's going to increase the outstanding share count. It's dilution and nobody likes that, especially if you're putting a lot of shares on the market. And they were. They were putting 2.5 billion shares on the market. I say were because the next filing that came out on Friday was a request to withdraw that filing. They don't want to sell any of the shares. They said it is not effective. It has not been declared. Nobody stamped it yet. We don't want it. Please pull it out. We don't want to sell anything. Now, normally they sell shares to get money. That's the whole point of selling shares is so that the company can raise funds. Maybe they have another way to get the funds we just don't know about. Is there a big investor? Is there a merger? Is there an acquisition? It's all speculation. And that's what gets a stock running. People start asking questions and saying, I bet you, maybe, and next thing you know, the stock is running on nothing, but there it goes. And this stock did the same thing today. All we know is they do not want to put this public offering out there. They're not going to sell 2.5 billion more shares. And that's great news, but is it worth pushing the price up or do people think something's gonna happen I don't know let's go take a look at the chart this is the six month four hour chart for NICH we got a high bubble back here of about 43 cents and a low bubble maybe two weeks ago of double zero four six whoa what a drop and though you can't tell it they had a good day today 
She hasn't been doing a whole lot of anything. She made one attempt to try to get over the 50 day SMA, hit her head and never even made it a smidge over, came down and hit this low and has just been sitting down here pouting all this time until today. And I say today only because Friday is when the filing came out and I don't see any activity on Friday, but I see a ton of it here. She broke that 50 day SMA with a huge price bar and lots of volume. And all of our technicals are all pointing up and looking strong. It Except we do have a pullback on the RSI, you'll always get the pullback on the RSI if the price falls. But everything else is still looking strong and the RSI could change like that. Let's take a look at our 20 day one hour view. Nothing going on until today. Again, yesterday was when the filing came out. We can see a little bit of rise yesterday, but nothing like today. She jumped off of that 50 day SMA, covered this golf got on top of the 200 and kept going. She started here at roughly a half a penny and got up to a roughly a penny and a half. So you're looking at 250 to 300% gains at her high today. She did come down, but she is sticking above the 200, which is good. All of our technicals are still very warm, but they do show signs of cooling off right now. Five day, five minute. All right, just looking at today, she took off right at the bell. She went from 0056 up to 0099. So you're looking at like 75% gains in that first bounce in the first five minutes. She hit her high in 20 minutes. At 10 to 10, she was done. She started to pull back. Now me, I normally will get out of a stock. If it starts running fast and it starts running all the way to 10, I'll be out at 10, 10.05. Because the market takes this hesitation a pause, a pullback right around that time, and it could continue to go down or it could bounce back, but I don't wait for the coin to land to see if it's heads or tails. I just take my gains, get out, and work with the second half of my day. That's right, I consider 9.30 to 10 in the morning the first half of my day. That's one play, and then after 10, the second half of my day. But this dropped early. She stopped here at 10 to 10, came down, but she kept most of her gains. Let's see here. Let's grab our Fibonacci and see if we kept at least 50%. I'm going to poke the bottom where the surge began and the top where the surge ended. And then just so it's easy to see, I'm going to put a white line down the 50% mark right there. So we want the price right there she is. So she bounced off that halfway point. Either you can think of it as she's lost 50% of what she put on the table or she's kept 50%, which is the way I'm looking at it. She stays above this, she's over 50% and she is right there right now on top of the 50 day SMA. Technicals look like she wants to continue falling. I can't deny that, but she's got some support here. There's a very good likelihood she could bounce off of that 50. She gives a lot of homage to the 50. Now she hasn't got a strong catalyst. She's running on a filing from Friday about not selling 2.5 billion shares. Well, that's great. That's a nice relief, but it really doesn't make the stock worth anymore. So I am presuming that people are excited about the speculation that he's going to get his money from somewhere else, a big investor, a merger, an acquisition, some revenue making company, something like that. But that's just my thinking. I don't know what everyone else is thinking. I just know that she's sitting at a nice bounce point right now with a soft catalyst. So it can't hurt to watch tomorrow to see if she does anything. I really don't expect them to. I think they need to start making money. They need a bigger catalyst to really run. However, it's always worth a watch. Now this is another stock that had me scratching my beard <laughs> wondering what has got this thing running. This is ticker FFPP, Fast Finance Pay. They had a lot of trades today and when I see a lot of trades I figure there's a lot of people watching it. The chart was screaming, the price was ripping it up so I figured there has to be a reason. So of course I dove in and did some research. I looked for current news and filings, nothing. How about anything old that was generating heat? I couldn't find anything, nowhere. So of course I ran over to Twitter and after a while I did find two tweets that pointed out what the information is and it came from the Secretary of State's office which is not available anywhere except at the Secretary of State's office. Now sooner or later there'll probably be a filing out but not yet. So getting this information fast is of importance and we got it today from a man on Twitter.
Thank you, sir. So FFPP finished today just over a penny, a penny and a half, 0 0.0155 with about 75% gains. She too is on the pink tier and current and got her green tick, so everything looks kosher. So they tell us that the company is a modern, scalable, real-time payment platform. They offer innovative solutions, whether for one-off purchases or reoccurring bookings, and they are aimed at large and small online merchants, as well as operators of a growing number of websites which generate their income from the freemium revenue model. Supported payment methods include MasterCard, Visa, SEPA, and instant bank transfers, as well as PayPal. The company offers banking and instant transfer solutions for a wide range of the world's most important currencies. So without a doubt, they are a fintech and they sound global, but some more DD will tell us. What was the relative volume around a tweet? Holy cow, what a powerful tweet that was. From 68,000 shares to 7.3 million. Woohoo! Share structure. All right, I did have a problem with this one. She is pink. I did dive into her disclosure. I could not find the float. Don't know why. And I jumped on Google. I could not find the float. Very difficult. So the best I can tell you is it is between 60 million and 29 million. Not bad, but not exact either. <laughs> Financials. What is this company doing? Well, they're picking up the gears. It went from first gear to second gear to third gear. $2,000 back in 2019. Remember those three zeros behind all of these. 195,000 in 2020, 1.3 million in 2021. And quarterly, uh, they're doing between two and a half to $300,000 every quarter. So roughly 80 to $100,000 a month. So they are making money. Disclosures. I don't think there's anything current over here, nothing since 2020, and nothing in the filings to tell us why she's running. And the news? Well, maybe. The last piece of news they had was in August. Issue of restricted stock pursuant to material contract. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't actually dive into this, and the truth of the matter is it may have something to do with the news today. Well, not news. Form. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Ooh, that's a close up. This is a tweet from OTCmethod.com. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Kiko Stocks tells us that the merger before the weekend on FFPP is hitting the Secretary of State's office. The company merged with a company OKDE. Just a ton of room on this daily chart if it starts getting more eyes. And this is the filing right here, folks. Now, this is at the Secretary of State's office, not the SEC, not FINRA. So we're not going to have an 8K on this yet. There's probably going to be one come out. But this is the first piece of information you can literally get a hold of if you know where to look. You can go to any of the Secretary of State's websites. There's 50 of them. That could be a lot of work. Or you can actually get a membership with some site which brings all that information into you. So this tells us that OK Germany, that's what the DE stands for, Germany, OK DE Holdings, which is a email company, I believe, uh, OK Security is their name. They are a very secure email company based out of Germany, and they have just been acquired by Fast Finance, the acquiring. So you have a merger here. Fast Finance has just got this German secure email company. And I don't know what they're going to do with it because there's no other information. All we have is this form. And this is what has got the stock running. FFPP, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here in May of 8.8 .8 cents and a low bubble here in October of 0052. Well over a thousand percent down. She has just been crawling across the floor for the longest time. And today was the first day she got up and did anything. And it was big, lots of volume, big price jump, put herself on top of the 50 and all of that with a hidden jewel, a piece of information that has not been made public. You either have to find it on Twitter, or you've got to go to the Secretary of State's office and do a search and find it, which isn't easy, or have a subscription to one or two websites which bring you this information. My point, 
I don't think a whole lot of people really saw it today and still it ran with a lot of volume. If a filing comes out tomorrow about this merger and everybody gets to see it easily in the light, I think it's going to have a bigger run than this. Technicals are all strong. Our PPO, which is like our MACD, except PPO is the percentage price oscillator. It only works for the portion of the price where the MACD works with the whole price. MACD is about ready to cross the signal line and our RSI is right up there near 70 in the overbought section. So everything still looks hot and strong. Looking at our 20 day one hour view. So she got over the 50 a couple days ago and has been hanging around up there, but not a lot of motion until today she took off and hit her high at noon. Hit her high of 0.0196 starting from the day before at 00893. So you have what, 83 to 196, wow. That's almost 100%. I think it's like 90% gains and we finished at 74. She kept most of her gains as you can see. Technicals, everything still has a lot of heat to it. She doesn't look too cool. She has had a pullback on the RSI because anytime the price drops, the RSI drops too. Five day, five minute. It was a good day. You can see she had a lot of trading today compared to all of her other days. She has just pushed up for the first half of the day, came down a little bit, and has landed on the new SMA that's come into the picture. We talk about this a lot. These new SMAs come on. It just seems to be the pattern that the price comes down and taps it like a tag team wrestling match or pay homage to it, whatever. It hits it and then goes back about its business. So hopefully that's what's going on right now. Technical so she is still falling. Technicals look pretty weak right now, but I would watch FFPP for that filing to come out tomorrow. Maybe a news press. This merger has not been publicly announced. And when it does, it's probably going to bounce again. So keep your eye on FFPP if you like to make money. So you do realize all three stocks we looked at were roughly a penny to get in right now. A great buy-in price. And two of the stocks we looked at still have a lot of potential, even for tomorrow. CNNA and FFPP. Now I think FFPP is your best bet. I think when a filing or piece of news comes out about the merger, that thing's going to have another good bounce. CNNA has still got a lot of heat and momentum in the charts. So I wouldn't take my eye off that one either. Niche. Niche is a good company, but they're not making any money right now. I'm thankful that they didn't sell another 2.5 billion shares, but we're hoping that the reason they didn't do that is they've got something up their sleeve, some money coming from a big private investor, a merger, an acquisition, something. So though I don't expect Niche to run, I expect something to appear. Just don't know what it is yet. Remember folks, due diligence is how I find all this stuff. Wherever you're at, just pay attention. What are people talking about? What are they posting about? What is the news all about? Don't forget about that news I had at the beginning of the video. A lot of good information in there. Go ahead, rewind and watch it. It helps my algorithms. <laughs> Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.